bigger is not always better. Today, we're gonna look at these small 180 watt, 12 volt rated solar panels and why this might be the right panel for your application. There are all kinds of solar systems. There are massive megawatt systems like this one I visited in Alaska that produces power for hundreds of houses, all the way down to little 10 watt solar panels to charge your phone. But most of the systems that you and I will be engaged in will be these mid range systems like this 11,000 watt system that I installed at my house. And I have a 7,600 watt inverter that right now is producing 7,600 watts. And on a sunny day like this, it produces enough power for the entire house and extra to charge an electric vehicle. Then there are medium sale systems for an RV or a cabin that might be totally off grid. And that's the system we're gonna look at today. Bouge RV sent me a couple of these 180 watt panels to use in an illustration I'm putting together on how to build an RV or cabin off grid system. I'm gonna show you the components that you need, the materials, the tools. We'll put one together, we'll test it out in an upcoming video, so be sure and stick around for that. As a courtesy to my viewers, now through July 20th, Bouge RV is offering 10% off for their 100 watt through 200 watt panels if you use the discount code in the description below, so be sure and check that out. Today, I'm gonna to compare this 180 watt panel to some residential size panels and show you the difference in how much power you can expect to get from them. And we'll go over why you might wanna use these high efficiency small panels for your project, even though the cost per watt might be a little bit higher than these residential scale panels. So let's dig into it. First, let's look at the output of these 180 watt panels. I put two of them in parallel on my little test rig, which uses NEP 600 microinverters that can handle more than these panels can output so we don't get any clipping. From this graph, which has watts on the left and time at the bottom, you can see the total output for one entire day. This is a sunny day in May, a little bit hazy, which results in some choppiness here. But with this mostly sunny day, we get 1.3 kilowatt hours of output. And for one panel, that's the area under this curve. To put that in perspective, my EB70S has a 0.7 kilowatt hour battery and we would be able to basically charge it twice in one day with just one panel, as long as it's a full sunny day. Now, I also used my Fluke Irradiance meter to measure the sun's irradiance throughout the day. Just around noon, we had 1000 watts per meter squared, which is where panels are rated. And at that point, we were achieving 160 watts, which is about 89% of its rated output. This chart shows watts on the left and watts per meter squared along the bottom. And this ties directly into how panels are rated. This vertical line here is marked off at 1000 watts per meter squared. And I took several measurements at this point, And that's how I can be sure that it's putting out 160 watts at that point. Now I was taking this data on a hot sunny day. It was 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32 degrees Celsius. And panels degrade in performance a little bit when it's hot. The Lab measurement is taken at 1000 watts per meter squared and 77 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 25 degrees Celsius. We would expect it to be a little bit under its rated performance and this 89% at 1000 watts per meter is very close to what I've gotten on all of my high performance panels. So I think this is a very good output. And if we continue the trend line, we can see that the panel will output its rated 180 watts at 1125 watts per meter squared. And where I live, we regularly get 1100, even 1200 watts per meter squared. So I would likely see this panel hit 180 watts pretty regularly on a fully sunny day. So if these panels are gonna perform the same as any high quality monocrystalline panel, why would you choose them? Well, there are four key reasons that you might wanna consider these sm smaller panels. I'll start with the lowest and go to the top reason. The number four reason would be handling. They are much, much lighter than large panels. These panels are 180 watts and they weigh 22.9 pounds or 10 kilograms versus the 390 watt bifacials I'm using right now. They're 62.6 pounds, 28 kilograms each. That is almost three times the weight of these 180 watt panels. Portability is another good reason. They're much easier to set up and put away. If you're not mounting them in a permanent location and you want to put them in your RV or you want to put them in your car or truck and take them to your campsite, take them in and out of the vehicle and set them up, really big panels are very difficult to do that with. There are multiple videos on YouTube where people have taken two of these size panels and put a couple hinges on the back and a latch on the front and made a suitcase out of them 
which gives you up to a 400 watt folding solar panel. It's a really great way to utilize these panels. Space is the second most important factor. In a lot of places, you just don't have the real estate for bigger panels. They fit in tight spaces on vehicles and roofs where there's no other option. For instance, if you look at this RV I'm laying panels out on, one, it's much easier to carry the panels up to, on the, up to the top, but it's also the only panel that'll fit in some locations. Especially when you consider the curvature of the roof, you may need to put two panels in, one of them slightly tilted from the other one so that you can get them across the curvature. You might have modules, antennas, air conditioners, all kinds of things on your roof that prevent you from having the real estate to put something very large. These smaller panels can fit in tight spaces and allow you to cover more real estate on the roof of your vehicle. Finally, the number one reason that you might need to choose one of these panels is voltage. These panels have a 19 volt max versus larger panels which might have a 30 to 50 volt max. A lot of charge controllers cannot take those higher voltages. So if you get one of those bigger panels, you'll destroy your charge controller. You need to make sure that your panel matches the inverter or charge controller that you're using. So let's take a look at the label for a minute and understand why it's so critical. Every PV module comes with a label. Usually they're on the back side and they have all of the critical information that you need for sizing and building your system. Even this bifacial panel has one on the back. It's just hidden in this center strip to make sure it doesn't block any of the sunlight coming from the back side. So let's go through each one of the specifications on this label and I'll focus a little bit more on the one I consider the most critical, which is open circuit voltage. Okay, here's the label from two panels. One, our Bouge RV 180 watt panel and the other one, a uh, mission solar panel that I have up on my array. Now, if we compare the ratings for these two panels, the first one is maximum power. Maximum power is what the panel can put out when the voltage and the current are optimized and the radiance is at 1000 watts per meter squared. So this Bouge RV panel is 180 watts and this Mission Solar is 375 watts. Now the next two ratings are the maximum power voltage and maximum power current. These two ratings are what the voltage and current are when you are achieving the maximum power output for the panel. So that voltage is 19 volts and that current is 9.4 amps. For the Mission Solar, the voltage at power max is 39 volts and the current at power max is 9.43 amps. The next one we'll look at is short circuit current. Short circuit current is the amount of current that you get when you directly short the panel in full sun at 1000 watts per meter squared. Now, this is a maximum output. It's not the current that you'll typically get because the maximum power isn't going to be at short circuit. At short circuit, you have zero volts and so zero power, but it's a rating that will let you know the max current that can be put through the system if it's shorted out. On the Mission Solar Panel, the short circuit current is 9.83 amps. Now one more rating that is voltage related is the maximum system voltage. For the Bouge RV panel, the maximum system voltage is 1000 volts, which means you could put 43 of these panels in series and not exceed the maximum voltage for the system. Now, the most critical measurement on this whole page is the open circuit voltage, which for our panel is 23 volts. And you can see for the Mission Solar panel, that open circuit voltage is 48.2 volts. Open circuit voltage is the key driver for your system setup. And you might think that current is just as important, but here's the difference. The voltage provided by your panels will be delivered to your equipment, whether it's asking for it or not whereas current is what's available to your equipment. If there's no resistor on the other end, no current is going to flow. So your equipment can manage how much current it gets. And that's what results in clipping. So if you put a whole bunch of panels in parallel and your system has a very small resistor, it just won't utilize them. You can have one panel that provides all of the power your charge controller can absorb. And if you stack 10 more panels on top of that, you will get zero additional power. Even though you have many, many more amps available, it just won't draw it. Now, one of the critical places this comes into play is with solar generators. My Blue Eddy EB70S solar generator has a maximum input voltage of 28 volts. It will only operate between 12 and 28 volts. That makes it a perfect match for this Bouge RV panel. It's exactly in its voltage range. 
and it can utilize however much current is being delivered. And we can stack multiple panels so that if it's a shady day, we can still get a lot of power even though they won't be utilized on a full sunny day. Even though this EB70S inverter can only utilize 8 amps of current and this panel can provide 9.3 amps, we don't have to worry about it. Extra current simply won't be utilized. So if we took a Y connector and put two of these panels in parallel, we would get 18.7 amps of available current. And you might say, well, why would you do that? If you can only use eight amps, why would you want 18.7 amps available? I'm glad you asked. The reason is you don't always have full sun. So on a bright, full sunny day, if that's all you have, maybe you live in California or something, and you can get by with just one panel because it's never rainy. But if you have one of these systems and you're using it for emergency backup, a lot of times when the power goes out, it's cloudy and you don't have as much sun available to charge things. So that's when you would want to over panel your system so that when the sun isn't as bright, you can still get enough power to run the things you want to run. And I'll show you an example in just a minute. Our power went out the other day. I was trying to cook some rice and I had to double up the input using two of these panels so that I could get enough power to run my inverter. So it's cloudy out and I'm trying to cook some rice in a power outage. The 200 watt Blue Eddy solar panel was providing 35 watts of power. So I put two 180 watt Bouge RV panels in parallel and that's giving us 92 watts. Under cloudy conditions, we have 30 watts with the 200 watt Blue Eddy. One 180 watt panel gives us 28 watts. And I can add one panel, additional panel in parallel. And that brings us up to 55 watts, 56 watts. So when we had 100% sunlight, the extra panel did absolutely nothing. But when it's cloudy, adding the panel almost doubles the input. Now let's evaluate a single panel in full sun. Okay, we have 165 watts with our panel angled up slightly, mostly sunny, and we are just over a thousand watts. So 165 watts. So these panels perform really well, and now you can see why you might want to put additional panels in, even though one is maxing it out on a bright sunny day. And all you need to accomplish that is Y connectors. Finally, the easiest thing to do if you're not sure if you have things set up properly is to just check the voltage. For one panel, we should see somewhere near 20 volts. And you can take any simple meter. I like this one because it's pretty much foolproof. It's really inexpensive. It's by Kwatts and it auto finds whatever you're trying to do. You don't even have to tell it you're looking for voltage. It'll auto find it. So you just turn it on, stick the probes in and measure out the voltage, which we're getting 22.79 volts from one panel, which is almost exactly what we'd expect to get. One panel gave us 22.79 volts. Now to connect them in series, you can't mess that up either because there's male and female connectors. They won't connect to the wrong one. So you simply connect one panel into the other, and now you have a positive and negative coming from each panel and that should double the voltage, and we'll check and see what we get. All right, now we're getting 45.8 volts. So right away, you would know if your system can't handle that high of a voltage that you have to change the way you have it set up. So that was a series connection. If you want to do a parallel connection to keep the voltage down to 22 plus or minus volts, you simply use the Y connectors, and you can't mess those up either because they are also set up with male and female connectors to match the panels. We'll plug the positive from one panel and the positive from the other panel into one of them. And then we'll take the negative from one panel and the negative from the other panel and one output at the end. Now, if I check that voltage, it should be back in the 22 volt range, but we'll have twice the current available to us 
for charging things. And we're back to 22.9 volts. So exactly one panel voltage, but we have two panels connected, which will double the current available, give us almost 16 amps available to charge a battery or run a system. However, as we showed with the cloudy setup, you won't have that kind of current available when it's not sunny. So you might want to put several panels in parallel when you expect to have low light conditions and want to be able to get a full charging capacity on your battery system. So there you have it. Simple way to connect the panels, either series or parallel, and a simple way to check to see if you've done it correctly. Next, I'm going to take power from these solar panels and use them to power a completely off-grid 12-volt system. I'm going to build a system using all the components you see here. This 40 amp charge controller will run it. We'll charge a lead acid battery and I have some lithium iron phosphate batteries coming in the mail. I have a 1500 watt inverter. We'll see what things we can power with it, how long it takes to charge the various batteries and how long they'll last. So stick around for that. When it's complete, I'll post it here. Got some really great stuff coming up. A full analysis of bifacial solar panels. Really interesting data coming up on that. I hope you'll stick around and I'll see you next time.